This video will show the process of setting up a GenPulse. First, locate the package folder. Go into the M327v2 application folder. At this point, you'll want to make sure that the modem has a data connection and it's plugged into power. Start with the Ethernet cable. Next, Plug in the power and data cable from the Gen Pulse. You'll see the power lights on the modem come on. Next, you'll want to hook up the USB cable. Launch the Flight Systems M2M setup application. Check to see if there's a COM port in the list. If you have multiple COM ports, you can go into Device Manager and click on Ports to determine which one says STM Microelectronics. In our case, it will be COM4. Select COM4 and hit Connect with Modem. On this page, you'll be able to adjust many settings. You can adjust your email subject. You can put whatever you want in there, just make it descriptive. You can put up to three email recipients or SMS messaging recipients. Make sure that these are formatted correctly and that the email addresses or SMS addresses exist. Go ahead and hit Save Settings. Go ahead and hit Yes to write these settings to memory. This will put your changes into memory that isn't erased on power loss. When you see Save Complete, everything was successful. Click on the Ethernet Config tab and see what the device info says. If you see Updating, hit Read Settings again. Verify that you have an IP address in the list. You can copy this IP address and enter it in your browser. This will pull up the status page for the Ethernet module. There is no username and password, so just hit Sign In. You can check your serial settings. You can also check your UDP settings. Your local port should be 161 for this. Your TCP configuration should have modem mode set to verbose modem response only. If modem mode is not set to verbose modem response only, please adjust this setting. If you do have to adjust this setting, make sure you hit OK at the bottom of the page and then apply settings on the left hand side of the page. Going back to the setup application, you can click on wireless config and ensure that it says not detected. To test the connection to the GenPulse, hit the GenPulse tab and hit read settings. You should see all the boxes populate with information. You can also click on the GenPulse dashboard page and ensure you have utility voltage and frequency. You can also click on show calibration and adjust your scales to dial in the readings that are displayed for utility and generator voltage. You can also do this with your analog channels. Go back to your GenPulse tab and select the alarms that you wish to enable for email notifications. With this setup, all alarms will be enabled except for maintenance reminders. You can also verify your generator under and over frequency settings along with the generator voltage under and over and utility voltage over and under. Make sure you set these for reasonable values based on your line configuration. If you have a three-phase setup, you'll want to enable the checkboxes next to monitor three-phase. You'll notice that once that's checked, you'll get three-phase readings instead of single-phase readings on your dashboard. If you wish to monitor generator frequency, check that box as well. You can set up your power failure delays, your exercise failure delay, and your minimum exercise time. Make sure you set your minimum exercise time to something a little less than what your generator exercises for. If you don't, the GenPulse will never think that your generator exercised properly.
You should also set labels for your analog channels to give them descriptive names for what they're actually measuring. In our case, we'll put battery voltage in analog 1, and analog 2 will be fuel level. Make sure to set these to always and put in a reasonable value for your under and over voltages on your battery. Let's set up our fuel level like we're monitoring an LP tank. We'll set our low at 10% and our high at 85%. We're going to set this to always instead of just while the generator is running. Go ahead and save your settings, and you'll notice it'll say writing to memory. You'll then see save complete. That will be your indication that saving settings was successful.